The place that I traveled to in Somalia um, earlier this year is called Baidoa. And it's also known as the city of death because just six years ago, in uh, the midst of a drought, um, a famine ripped through. And then to see fathers and mothers, grandmothers, streaming in through the desert to come to the edge of this town, uh, having crossed militant lines, um, fleeing for their safety, and bringing their babies. It's not so much that they're hungry, it's that they've ceased to be hungry because of the deficiencies that they face. These kids who need an intervention uh, are at the end of their rope. So to be in this situation where essentially vultures were circling around these kids and you knew that their lives were hanging by a thread, uh, it was incredibly haunting and distressing knowing that this marked the uh, sort of the epicenter of what's been termed the world's worst humanitarian crisis in about 70 years. In 2008, Food for Famine Society was founded. I was catapulted into action when I watched a program about ready-to-use therapeutic food. The journey then started. The journey of how can I do something for these children across the world. RUTF is ready to use therapeutic food. It's like peanut butter on steroids. It's super powerful and it moves them away, away from the cliff. And that way they get back to normal uh, weight and they get back to a normal composition for their body and then they can go back to normal food. You know, putting their lips on it, uh, sort of chewing with their teeth to, to get it into their mouth. You had this sense that it wasn't hopeless, it wasn't futile. We had something to give. We had something that actually can stave off starvation. What can we do to make a difference in the lives of children? How can I take and share the bit that I have with somebody who might be in need? And it's not just a needs-based thing, it's a justice thing. Because right? why is it that, you know, you roll the DNA dice and I'm born in London, Ontario, Canada. I've got, you know, all of my needs looked after. But there are kids over there who, no fault of their own, were born at the crossroads of, of weaponry and, and drought and famine and disaster. We have this global dysfunction around food. Half of the world is stuffed and half the world is starved. Half the world is overnourished and half of the world is undernourished. And we always think about those as two distinctly different issues that are far apart. But what if instead of thinking of them as something opposite, we could think of them as two sides of one coin? Well, Maria Martini, who is Food for Famine Society, she came to me and said, can she bring a few people to hear about a project? So I said, nope, I'm not going to have you just tell me about a project. I'm going to get some students together. Food for Famine Society will provide to the students at Heritage Woods Secondary School sponsorship for ready-to-use therapeutic food. They are being active in the Move for Mana Challenge and as they burn calories, a total of 500 calories translates to one package of ready-to-use therapeutic food and then by World Vision will be shipped to Somalia for the children who are suffering from severe acute malnutrition. It's actually quite easy. Every phone in your pocket is tracking all your movement. So it knows how many steps you're taking, whether you're riding your bike, how many calories you're burning. All those calories roll up to a dashboard and every 500 calories burned turns into a life-saving packet of food for a child. I think that this project is really unique and it's really special because we get the chance to save people's lives. I mean, you can't I'm, and not a lot of people can say that they've saved someone else's life, and we get to do it. Well, I pulled together an amazing group of students back in June, and we decided that there were certain things we had to have done over the summer, and I went away for summer holidays, and these students did it. They made a promotional video, they did everything that they said they were going to do. And since that time, when we got back in September, we knew we had to start flying. So we had a presentation to staff, we had to get um, basically all our staff on board first before we could get students on board. And we really had to push our students to uh, extend themselves even though they were starting to get really busy with classes. But we kept going back to the reason why we we're doing this, to save lives. Learning about this initiative really sparked my imagination to say, wow, we could get 1,400 students as the leading edge of a new wave of activists who are actually active and actually getting after it. And 
Uh, so we, to think about high school students um, really getting excited about their own bodies, about their own wellness, and also getting excited about the fact that what they do, this intensely local experience of staying active, getting off the couch, and making themselves better could actually have impact on the world. I got super excited about that this could catch on and it could be much bigger than, than Heritage Woods. It has a whole local element and a global element, which I absolutely love. I love it that locally it's going to get students active and aware, spread an awareness about world food issues, and globally, oh my gosh, we're going to save lives. And to know that Canadians uh, and Americans are joining together to help with our Somalian brothers and sisters, uh, that to me helped indicate that um, the world could be a bit brighter place if we really put our hearts and our hands together uh, to move forward for good.